Today we are moving on to Chapter 2, Forces and Energy. Today's specific lesson focus is on the nature of force. In this lesson, we will be learning about force, what it means, the scientist, Sir Isaac Newton, the measurement called the Newton, and how to calculate net force. So let's get started. Like velocity and acceleration, a force is described by its strength and direction. History. Sitting in my garden in the spring of 68, dreaming up calculus. All of a sudden, an apple falls, and I'm like, wait, why does all stuff always fall? Could it be miraculous? Now I'm searching for the right way to write the thing. MC square, your equations are tasty, but not where I'd stop. Let me illustrate gravity with a mic drop. Not, not, not an equal force in this paradigm. It's the way the mic moves through the curvature of space time. Gravity's waves bending in the fourth dimension. But you said the groundwork, thank you in absentia, Newton. Thanks for what you showed us, Newton. We're standing on your shoulders, Newton. Your equations are still up to snuff. No one had invented pencils, but you came up with this. science, the word force has a simple and very specific meaning. A force is a push or a pull. That's really all there is to it. But scientists use it a little bit more specifically and they calculate that force. When, uh, when one object pushes or pulls another object, the first object exerts a force on the second object. The strength of a force is measured in SI, in a SI unit called a Newton. Newton is represented by the letter N. So when you see a capital N in a measurement stance, it means or stands for Newton. It is named after the scientist Sir Isaac Newton, who was born in 1643.
In this program, we are going to learn about newtons. What is a newton? A newton is a unit used to measure force. Forces move objects. When an object falls, it is because the force of gravity is pulling it downward. Sailboats move because the force of the wind is pushing the sails of the boat forward. Force is applied in quantities. That means force has an amount. The amount of force is measured in newtons. This instrument, called a dynamometer, is used to measure force. The amount of force it takes to throw a football is measured in newtons. The amount of force it takes to hammer a nail is measured in newtons. The amount of force needed to launch a rocket is measured in newtons too. One newton is the force it takes to move an object that weighs one kilogram through a distance of one meter. The Newton was named after Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton was a scientist who made many discoveries about motion and forces. Now that you have a better understanding of what a Newton is, think about this. How can increasing the amount of force, or Newtons, affect the movement of an object? Think about it. Often, more than one force acts on an object at the same time. The combination of all the forces of an object is called the net force, as we heard in the video, which can be calculated. So let's look at determining net force. To, to calculate net force, you determine direction. If the forces are in the opposite direction, you subtract the smaller force from the larger force. So, for example, these two dogs are playing tug of war. The larger dog has a greater force. Let's just say 12 Newton. The small dog only has 10 Newton of force. That would be 12 Newton minus 10 Newton, which equals 2 Newton, or two net force. So, opposite direction, we subtract. Like the dog's tugging, we need to subtract. Next is the force if it moves in the same direction. Let's look at that one. In this case, you add. So we have 25 newtons plus 20 newtons. Figure that in your head. See if you get it right. Is 45 newtons to the right because this uh, family is pushing the piano to the right with 25 newtons and 20 newtons, so that equals 45 newtons. So let's have you try it. Your turn. Okay, look at these two dogs pulling. Is it the same direction or opposite direction? That will determine if you add or subtract. Look at the newtons on both sides and see what you get. The answer is two newtons to the right. Because this is the larger dog, it's going to have more force. It has 12 newtons, and the smaller dog is 10 newtons. 
So this has two Newtons more force, so this dog in a tug of war would likely win. Let's try the next one. So we have 70 Newton and 90 Newton. First determine the direction. That will determine if you add or subtract. Let me give you a second to, add, to either add or subtract those together, depending on what you see. And the answer is 160 Newton to the left. They are pushing it in the same direction. They are not playing tug of war. So you would add this, 70 plus 90, which is 160 Newton. Remember the N stands for Newton, named after Sir Isaac Newton, two, and they're pushing it to the left. Ready for the next one? Now, this one can be just a little bit tricky, so make sure you look, but I think you can figure it out. My question on this one is, well, first of all, what is the net force? And then my next question is, will the sled move? Go. The net force is going to be zero, zero Newton, because this sled dog team and this sled dog team are equal in force, they're equal in might. So 200 minus 200 equals zero. That means the sled is not going to move, at least at first until one dog gets tired. <laughs> but for this lesson, think about it in Newtons. The force, the force, the sled will not move if it's equal. What is force? Let me tell you what you will probably read in your textbooks. Force is a push or pull upon an object, right? Though this cannot be really classified as incorrect, it hardly explains anything about the concept of force. This is what you will assume after reading this definition. You will imagine a stationary object on the ground and someone pushing it or pulling it. Yes. When force is applied, the stationary object will move. But just this does not explain the concept of force entirely. Before we move on to the definition of force, let's clear a few misconceptions about it. Let me ask you a question. This ball is lying at rest on the ground. It's stationary, not moving at all. Is there any force acting on it? Listen to my question carefully. Are there any forces acting on the ball when it is stationary? If your answer was a no, or if you didn't have an answer, it means you don't know the concept of force yet. The answer is yes. There are forces acting on this ball. There is a gravitational force which is trying to pull the ball towards the center of the earth. And the ground is applying an equal force exactly in the opposite direction. This force is called the normal force. Because these two forces are balanced, they do not change the position of an object. The net force acting on the ball is zero. So what does this tell you? Just humans pushing or pulling is not the only kind of force. And just because there are forces acting on an object will not mean the object will move. For the object to move, there has to be some net force. So now let's say a person softly kicks the ball. What happens then? Yes, the position of the ball changes. Why did the position change? It's because there was another magnitude of force acting on it and this time the forces were not balanced. The ball moved and there was displacement. But hold on, why did the ball stop moving after covering 15 meters? The ball started moving at a pace and then slowly came to a halt. If there's no force from the other side to stop it, how did it stop? Was there a force which stopped it? Yes, it was friction that stopped the ball. While the force you applied was towards the right, the force of friction was towards the left. Let's make it even more interesting. Assume your screen to be your frame of reference in this example. 
also assume that this straight horizontal line is a frictionless flow and there's no air resistance. The ball appears from the left of your screen and moving towards the right at a uniform velocity of 2 meters per second. The only two forces acting on the ball are the gravitational and the normal forces which net each other out. In this setting, will the ball ever stop moving? No, it won't. It will continue to move along the same path at the same speed unless there is another external force which acts on it. Here, as the forces are balanced, the ball will continue to move at 2 meters per second. Most people assume that if the object is moving, then there is some net force acting on it, but that's not true. An object will continue to move at uniform velocity, even if the net force on it is zero. So there are two things we've learned here. First, if the object is stationary and the net force acting on it is zero, then it will continue to remain at rest. Second, if the object is moving at uniform velocity and the net force acting on it is zero, then it will continue to move at that same uniform velocity. Now, when this ball is moving at 2 meters per second and there is an external force applied from the left, what will happen? Yes, the ball will accelerate. Its velocity will change. Let's say the velocity changes to 3 meters per second after this external force is applied. After that, the ball will continue to move at 3 meters per second unless acted upon by another external force. So nobody's really seen or touched force. It can only be understood by knowing what happens to an object when force is applied to it. If the body is stationary, do not assume that there is no force acting on it. And if the body is in uniform motion, do not assume that there is some net force acting on it. So what is force? A force is a push or a pull upon an object resulting from its interaction with another object. So when you kick the ball, the ball also exerts some force onto your leg. But as the force of your kick is stronger, the ball moves to the right. There are many more concepts we need to understand about force, which we will cover in the next video. That concludes our lesson today on the nature of force.